Hi, and welcome to Val's Visions and Designs. Uh, my name is Valerie Bennett, and I am the owner and operator of Val's Visions and Designs. Uh, glad to be here today. Excited to make a fall grapevine. So uh, let me just pull this up on my tablet so I can keep up with comments. Uh, I know everybody's super busy in the summer, and I uh, will try my best today to keep this uh, to an hour and uh, not much more than that because <laughs> I know everybody has busy schedules so please let me know when you're here and I appreciate your being here hi Kim from Porter Texas good to see you um, I do wanted to say before we get started and again I'm not going to try to keep you on here really long we are going to make the bow today I had promised uh, that I would do that on live so we are going to make the bow and I'm going to use the bow dabra uh, which is my favorite bow maker and uh, also my daughter is moderating so she'll be greeting you in and uh, if you have any questions of course you can always ask Casey and Casey has most of the answers or um, I'll try to catch them too so I appreciate y'all so much hi Elaine how are you good to see y'all this morning um, just a really quick note my Christmas in July kit uh, I still have three remaining and those I'm going to make on my live in two weeks from today. So that is Sunday, July 26th uh, at 2 p.m. Central Time. Um, I'll be making my Christmas kit and Casey will be sharing my links today, my uh, YouTube channel, my uh, business page. Of course, you're on my business page and um, also my Etsy shop. So it's going to be really pretty. It has uh, Casey's hand painted signs. So definitely go and check that out. Um, I can't think of anything else right now except to say good morning. Hey, Kara, and let's get rolling. Let's get started. Um, we have a, I have a 16-inch grapevine this morning that I have already cleaned, and uh, I'm just going to set it aside so we can get busy on the bow. Um, I think I have a pretty easy way for y'all to make a grapevine. At least I find it easy to make the grapevine um, when I do it uh, this way. And so I'm excited about showing y'all that. Okay, so we do have out my Bodabra. And uh, I'm going to make the loops. I'm going to start off with the loops at five and a half inches. Oh, so glad you took a break, Kara. I know packing is horrible. Um, I am going to use all one and a half inch ribbon. Um, personally, just me. Uh, I like a, a smaller bow on a grapevine. Not necessarily smaller bow, meaning less ribbon, but just not the big uh, two and a half inch ribbon. I think it just looks better on a grapevine if you keep it smaller. So I have got an array of ribbon here uh, that's all fall. Let me just kind of pull it out here and take a look. I do, uh, I plan to add some of the little um, cotton, cotton picks that I have here. So I'm thinking I may go ahead and open up this uh, cotton ribbon. Hey, Cheryl, how are you? Um, let's see. And then I love this one. I had this one in the one I pictured yesterday. Uh, just the pretty fall leaves. So uh, maybe doing that one. Uh, I have used this in everything. Uh, I love this one too. I love the colors. I think it gives us a nice little pop of colors in one ribbon. And I haven't opened up this one yet. This one is a uh, fall acorn. Uh, I'm not sure why I haven't used it yet, but I grabbed it and pulled it over here. Uh, probably will only use maybe three different kinds of ribbon. Um, this is very pretty, too. Maybe we'll let this one be the, uh, the top of the bow. So I'm going to start off with five and a half inches, and I have a pipe cleaner here. And I'm just going to load it into my Bodabra. And I'm just going to tuck these little ends under. Now, I don't have a lot of extra on the, uh, the bow because what I have found that when you make your bow and put it on your grapevine, it's better once you tie it to go ahead and use a zip tie. It just holds that bow tighter together when it actually goes up on the grapevine. Hey, Linda. Hey, Mimi. How are you? You have to keep the volume down, but you'll watch. That's okay. I just appreciate y'all being here today. Um, so how many of y'all have ever made a grapevine? I know that sometimes it's very intimidating to make one. 
uh, I'm going to show y'all an easy way to make a grapevine by breaking up a couple of garlands. I got two fall garlands. I got the uh, uh, a big pot fall garland. Look how nice this is. I got this from Trendy Tree. Uh, I think the garland was about $22, but so far I'm going to have about four projects that I've gotten out of this. Uh, and then the cotton garland is the same thing. Um, it's got lots of greenery on it and the cotton balls. And this also a big garland that came from a uh, trendy tree. So you just cut these big pieces and it takes a lot of the guesswork out of what you're going to put uh, on your grapevine. You don't have to do, you know, a thousand different things. Um, you can just use a couple of these and um, you've already got the fullness. So, let's go ahead and make the bow. Thanks for coming. Hey there, uh, Avail. Abnell. Abnell, good to see you. Uh, hey, Judy, how are you? Hi, Grace. Good to see y'all. Hey, Cherry. So glad y'all are here with me today. Um, I don't know how many of y'all like to do farmhouse, but I did find something that's farmhouse, and I put it somewhere. If we get up to... 75 today and I know that's a lot for a Sunday afternoon look at this cute little farmhouse chicken I found um, these are really popular right now uh, Dollar General sells them and I happen to find one now I don't do a lot of farmhouse but it's beige and tan it's got the little rooster I said it was a chicken it's a, it's not a chicken it's a rooster uh, but it would be so cute in a farmhouse design. So if we can get up to 75 today, I'm going to give this pretty little rooster guy away. And then one of y'all can share it uh, after you make it. So if you like these, these are at Dollar General. They're only $5. But apparently they've been very hard to find for people that like to make the uh, farmhouse. Hey, Debbie, good to see you. Uh, hey, Tammy, how's my buddy? Nancy, good to see y'all. Thank y'all for joining today. Please like and share. Um, that way, maybe we can hit 75. If you're not a farmhouse-like person and you want a gift, I have a nice roll of this really pretty Merry Christmas ribbon um, that I can give instead, okay? So, uh, either way, if we get to 75, whichever one y'all prefer, the winner that's what we'll do and okay so let's go ahead and get started I think I'm gonna put this uh, this cotton uh, down on the bottom and I'm not gonna make my loops too big I do want to make some tails because nothing's prettier to me than when you can curl the tails on a one and a half inch ribbon so um, let's go ahead and start off with just five and a half inch loops and I have it on my 20 on my mat. Now, this side of my mat is trashed. This is the side of the mat that I do all my gluing on. So, uh, I put it on here because whenever I do glue projects and clean up grapevines, it really does a beating on the mat. So, uh, I went ahead and uh, decided I'd put it on this side ahead of time. Thank y'all for those hearts and I appreciate y'all sharing. So, we're just going to make about a five, I say a five and a half inch loop on each side and I love this Bodabra because I can start right off here and decide to see if I've got my loops the same size by just lifting them up all right now they're not even so one side's even got to get shorter or one side's got to get a little bit longer I think I'm going to shorten that beginning because I, I want it to be full but not too long that's what I love about making bows on the Bodabra to me, it's just it's just easy because I can put the wand in here and I can, you know, make sure that I have my loops the same size. Then I'm going to twist so I have the ugly side up. And we're going to make another loop exactly the same size as that one. And I do love this uh, cotton, the little cotton ribbon. I think this is so cute. Hey, Bib, it's okay. You're not late. Hey, Leanne, how are y'all? Thank you for sharing, Tammy. Yes, y'all, please share. Um, I'd appreciate it. I'm not using the chicken today, Mimi. I'm going to give it away um, as a prize if there's some, if we can make it up to 75 today. Uh, it was something I found at Dollar General, and I've seen many people using them in their farmhouse um, 
creations and thought, well, I'm going to grab one of these. Uh, if I don't end up giving it away, I might try to do uh, a farmhouse. I know that they're extremely popular. All right, so I've got two loops on each side, and I think I'm going to go put my wand in it when I cut my ribbon, and then I just bring down my tail. And another thing I love about the Bodabra, I can pull that tail down with my wand in it, and my ribbon's not going to move. All right, so we got that layer in. Hello, Karen. How are you? Good to see you. Is Mimi gone already? Bye, Mimi. Bye, Kara. <laughs> okay. All right, so my next layer, I want to pull in lots of orange. Um, let's see. Maybe if we go ahead and do... This is just a little solid. I, it was a 50-yard roll, and I had just about used the entire roll because I absolutely love this uh, for fall. I've used it for all kind of projects. So I'm going to come in with this one, and the, what I'm planning on doing is making about... I think I'm going to make about four loops with this one, too. So I'm going to make my tails longer. I think I'm making my tails about... Let's see, let's get back over here. They're about 11 or 12 inches long. And I'm going to go ahead and come back in with this one. And, of course, twist it when you get it in your Bodabra. And let's make this one just a little bit shorter, not much. Not even a half of an inch, about a half an inch shorter. Uh, I like lots of tails, and I like lots of bows. So... Uh, I tend to make fewer loops and a lot more tails when I do a grapevine. We'll do two loops of this one as well. And again, all of them today that I'm using are one and a half inch ribbons, and they all have come from Craft Outlet, uh, one of my very favorite places. Yes, my Christmas kits are sale. Uh, the first loop I made was about five. A little over five, not much. And now this loop is about right at five. So I would say my first loop was about five and a half. And then this one is five. And I'm going to go ahead and cut it. And I may come back to it and I'll show you what we're going to do with it when I come back to it. All right, since I've got the orange, let's see. What color do I want to put in here next? We've got every fall color. I've got fall pumpkins and cotton. Uh, let's see. I'm going to go ahead and throw in a little bit. I thought this was going to be on the top, but I think I'm going to use, I think I'm going to use this one on top. So this is the pretty little acorn. Again, I'm going to make my tails longer because I love to curl the tails. Did you guys see the grapevine I posted yesterday? You love making grapevines? Uh, I really didn't used to make a lot of grapevines, but I'm finding them a lot of fun now. You just can't be intimidated by them. Uh, I think I'm going to just come in with one loop of this one. And I'm going to make it the same size as the orange I just did. You know, nothing makes a grapevine look more complete to me than a really pretty bow. Uh, but again, I don't want the bow to overwhelm the grapevine. I just want it to enhance the grapevine. All right, and then I'm going to come back in with this orange. And all I'm going to do with this orange is throw in another tail. And I'm just going to throw this tail up. That'll just keep a little bit of that color going through. All right, that's what I was going to show you that I was going to do with that. I don't know if any of y'all ever throw in a tail. Do I prefer wire or zip ties? Karen, I prefer pipe cleaners. Hey, little Kim. Um, I prefer pipe cleaners. I, I, I get a better grip. I can't get a good grip on the wire and get it tight enough. So what I'll do is tie this one off with pipe cleaners. And then once I get it um, all put together, then I'm going to tighten it, the final tight, with the, uh, the uh, uh, zip tie just because it'll stay together better on the grapevine if it's really tight. So, hey, Kim, how are you? Hey, Donna, welcome. So glad to see you. Um, thank you for joining. Y'all remember that I appreciate it. If y'all will like and share, 
We're at 56. We don't have far to go. We'll give away a freebie. Okay, so let's see. I've got one, two, three. I probably don't need a whole lot more loops. Let's, um, let's put a little bit of this one in here. This is the fall leaves. And I'm going to shorten the tails on this one because I think I want it more to just, you know, to fluff it. And I'm going to make the loops on this one about, let's see where I am here, about four inches. And it's right next to that other burlap, so they probably really won't pop that much. I probably should have put, well, I've got that little bit of orange in there. That might help break it up. Okay, and then I'm just going to go ahead and make, let's make two loops. Let's make two loops with this one. You like grapevine, grapevine wreaths? I do too. I really do. Uh, I hope that, you know, uh, I can help any of you that might be skeptical about making them because I'm going to show you such a good way um, to do these. I think I've, what have I done? I think that's my one, two, one, two. I must have started with my tail wrong. What did I do? Oh, there's my tail. Okay. I couldn't see it. It was so little compared to the others. All right. Now let me put that back in after I took it out. Go right back in here with it. I do love these fall leaves. They're so pretty. All right. One more and there we go. All right. So that was two loops of those. And I'm going to go ahead and put my little wand in here because that just kind of tightens everything down in that bone maker for you. So you don't have such a big stack and it's going to be hard to hold on to. And this tail I was cutting a little bit shorter. Oh, thank you, Elaine. Hi, TK. How are you? I hope it's going to be a beautiful bow. Now, I don't put my bow in right away um, when I first start making the grapevine. I'll bring it up to it to kind of get a placement. We're just going to do a, a C today to where you just do the one half and then put the bow in the middle. I think that's an excellent grapevine, especially for a beginner, um, just to go ahead and do the C. And then we're going to finish off, I think, with this one. Or do I want to put a pop of yellow? Hmm. Got two of those. I think I'm going to throw in maybe one loop of yellow. Because the one thing I noticed about mine yesterday, oops, take the wand out, was it, I didn't think my bow had quite enough bright colors in it. So um, I wanted to go ahead and add a little pop of yellow. And I'm going to make it, again, just a wee bit smaller, maybe half an inch smaller. That'll just give us a little pop of color in there. Then cut that tail. And we're going to finish off with this one. Let's just double check my loops. So um, how many of y'all have the Bodabra and make bows with it? I know a lot of people just use it to hold things. I think it's an awesome um, bow maker because, you know, really you only need your measurements when you first get started. Um, and then after that, you really don't need them anymore. And we're just going to make, I think I'm going to do three loops with this one. I think. Sometimes I'll stick a flower in the middle. Sometimes I don't. So if I put that third loop, I'm going to regret having put that third loop in there. Let's just leave it with two. Because I will probably add a flower to that. Okay, here we go. The fun part. Let's get it all squished down in here. And do our wand to make sure it, it's going to be tight. Hi, Crystal. Welcome. Welcome again. My name is Valerie, and this is Val's Visions and Designs. Uh, you just used it to make a bow before you signed on to watch you. Use the bow dabber. Good, Kim. All right. See, we already have our, our pipe cleaners here. So all we have to do is bring our pipe cleaners through the little section. And it probably would have been easier if I would have used a little bit bigger piece, but I didn't want to waste it. 
just go ahead and twist it right there in your bodabra. Twist it tight. And then you can just lift out the whole stack and you don't lose your stack. And then I just lay it over. Twist it real tight. Pull it tight from the front and then twist it in the back. And there we've got a big stack of, big stack of ribbon. Now, of course, this is not going to be enough um, pipe cleaner on here for me to actually put it on my fluff box. So I'm just going to go ahead and attach it just momentarily while I fluff it a little bit to my grapevine. Because you did just buy the Bodabra, getting rid of your Easy Bow Maker. I just, I like the Easy Bow Maker, but I just don't like losing my stack. And uh, that seems to be what happens a lot whenever I do the Easy Bow Maker. I don't like um, losing my stack. So before I twist this tight with the uh, pipe cleaner, I am just going to attach it just to a nice big piece of this grapevine where I can get a nice tight grip on it in here. And then I can fluff it right here on the grapevine. Because you can always fluff your bows on your wreath or your grapevine. Hey, Jennifer, good to see you. You sprinkled. Thank you for sprinkling. I appreciate that, y'all. Hey, what I say? 75? I see we're up to 64. So now I'm just going to come in and fluff out these loops. Can y'all see this? Can you get a good view? You want to make sure that you, um, you know, make sure they're not twisted in the back so just go to where they are and then just make sure that they're lifted they're not twisted back there and then I'm gonna do the same thing with the other two loops because if you have a twist by your uh, where they're tied in there it's never going to quite fluff the way you want it to all right and I know we have a lot of tails so I'm going to go ahead and start pulling the tails down too and you want to pull your tails down in the same order that you made them so that way they will um, lay down the right way. If you don't pull your tails down in the same order that you made them, you're going to have a really hard time getting them to cooperate. So let's go ahead and pull these tails down. Uh, my bow maker, I actually got this one at Michael's. Uh, I ordered one to give away. Uh, I got it from Amazon, but it took such a long time to get here, and I keep saying that I'm going to get another one and give it away uh, on another live, so I will try to remember to do that before I do my Christmas live, uh, my Christmas kit, and uh, that way I can give away one that day. All right, so I've got all my tails are pulled down now. See how much easier it is now to get your tails to cooperate? If you go ahead and pull those down in the same direction, in the same order that you just laid them in there, this is the way that it will work the best for you, okay? Remember these two tails I pulled up because I wanted them up. So they're still going to be up. I see 72. I make it look so easy, Donna. Oh, I hope so. Um, okay, now it's just a matter of pulling and separating our our loops. So we've had the orange one that I did two loops in as well. So I'm just going to pull one up and one down. You can also adjust your loops if you think something needs to be a little bit smaller um, before you tighten it. Now, once you tighten it with that zip tie, it's really, really hard um, to get anything else to move. All right, so there was our orange, and then next I had the little acorns. I'm just going to give those a little fluff and make sure they're straight. And then I had my little fall leaves here, so I'm just going to pull one up and one down. Same thing over here. I'm just going to pull them apart, make sure they're straight down here where you twisted them in. That's where you want to make sure they're straight. Fluff up the yellow and then fluff up these last little two. And I think I may make those just a tiny bit shorter. So you just pull the tail a little bit. 
There we go. So now we'll have an idea of how much we want to change on our grapevine. We've got our bow done, and I'm just going to come back in here and untie it. Now, of course, we'll we'll fluff it some more, and we'll um, we'll trim the tails more uh, once we actually get it on the grapevine for good. This is where I'm going to go ahead and go in and just take a nice twist tie, and I'm just going to go ahead, not twist tie, guys, a zip tie, sorry. We'll take a zip tie to pull around everything and make it really tight. And then I'm also going to give myself a little bit bigger of something to hook it through the grapevine. So let me find myself another, another pipe cleaner. Now at this point, if you wanted to use florist wire uh, to go through your grapevine, you could definitely add a piece of florist wire. Again, I just have a really hard time uh, getting those things tight, so I kind of stay away from them. All right, so here's our little bow. We have our little bow ready for our grapevine. And now we're going to start making our grapevine. Okay. So what y'all think so far? We doing good so far? Y'all give me some hearts. Let me know what you think. You think this is working? You think this is going to be pretty in our grapevine? We've got lots of fall color. And we have lots of tails. And uh, we'll show you more what we're going to do with all those tails once we start working on the grapevine. All right, we'll lay that one aside. And we can always bring it back. Now, when you go to start to make your grapevine, you want to clean it. And I think I've done a video on how to clean your grapevine. But you also want to make sure you find the spot that is the prettiest spot. And what I mean is, you want the prettiest part of the grapevine that's going to show to be, you know, not where you add your florals. Thank y'all, guys. Thank y'all. Okay, so I was looking at it earlier, and I like how... Let's see, look, you want to look to the side that curves the prettiest. And I think this side, if y'all agree with me, it has a prettier curve and a prettier shape to it. Not as many of the big um, pieces of the grapevine going through it. So I think this is the part that we're going to um, leave open, okay? So what I generally do is I will put the bow right towards the center. So I'm going to work my pieces off from that center. And I, like I said, I've got these nice big pieces that came off of a garland that already have your leaves attached. All of the pretty little fall sticks are in here. The little, the little berries, the little grapes. We've got a little pumpkin. So you don't have to start gluing all of these things in separately because they're already pretty just the way they are. So what we want to do is find the prettiest way to lay it in here. All right, we definitely won't need this big piece of this stick. I should have cut that part off already. Again, this came off of a garland from Trendy Tree. And it was a nice big garland, so I have used it for many projects. All right, now let's see. So if we put it going this way, of course, I guess I should get the price tag off of it. You know, I wish the price tags on these things actually did say what the price was, but it was a five-foot long pumpkin garland with ball accents, and it came from Trendy Tree. All right, so we already have, like I said, you can bend it. It's all on wire. So all you've got to do is figure out the best way to lay it down. Let's do, kind of unwind everything here. Of course, we have two pieces of pumpkin in this one. All right, let me look at the other one. The other one, we'll only need two pieces of this garland to do this. Oops, 69! Come on, girls. Come on, ladies. Come on. Share, 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 share. Yes, the garland is so easy. Now, look. 
You see how this division is right here in the center? Isn't that just perfect? If you lay this piece in just like this, you've already got a spot for your bow. Hi, Annette, how are you? So what I'm gonna do, since it's a heavier piece, I'm gonna zip tie this one directly to the grapevine. So I'm just gonna go right down through my grapevine and zip tie this piece, because it's gonna hold it. A zip tie is gonna hold it much better uh, than glue when you get these heavier pieces. It'll just be a matter of getting the zip tie to go where I want it. And I've got these nice darker, the black um, zip ties. Let's try to get it in there right where I want it. You know, I think the garlands just really help take the guesswork. All right, let's see. Here's my C right here. So I am just going to zip tie that piece in. And then we can move it and maneuver it still. All these pieces are wired so they can be maneuvered around the grapevine. And then we're just going to cut off that zip tie because it's going to be camouflaged by our bow. And what I throw on the floor? Stick. Okay. Then over here, you see how this piece right here is kind of wobbly? So since it's kind of wobbly, I'm going to go ahead and put another zip tie on this end to attach this side. So we're just going to go in again with another zip tie. It does make it easy, Tammy. If you get a good piece of garland, it takes all the hard work out of it for you. Uh, and you could do the same thing with a really nice fall pick. Um, if it's laid out pretty, why break it up? Just put it on there the way it is. Just, you know, just attach it. Attach it with a grapevine. I mean, a, a zip tie. I'm looking for where my other piece is trying to come out. Way down there. That's not where I want it. I need it to come out right over here. All right. Then I'm going to lay that piece right there. Kind of place it how I want it. And then just zip tie that piece in. And then just kind of pull our pumpkin back a little bit. All of it's wired. We have this one big piece, this one big stem. We just want to kind of bend it to where it comes back towards the back a little bit. So we're already forming a natural curve. You see the, the, the C that is beginning to form with what we have so far? So now all you're really going to have to do is start going back in here with more picks because um, you're already getting the basis of your grapevine laid in here. Here is all of these pretty little leaves that are attached. Here is our spot. See how those leaves spread out so nice on there? You know you're already getting a ton of of, of, of coverage from just this one piece that I put in. You're going to get your garland? Yes, get your garland. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and zip tie down here. Let me grab some more. I think that these are probably, I've got some 10 and probably some good 8 inch zip ties, but if you use the darker color, uh, unless you are using a light colored uh, grapevine, these will blend in a lot simpler. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and attach this one down here at the bottom and we are going to start gluing some things in too uh, when we go back in and fill everything in all right so i'm just going to go ahead and tie this big stem down here tie it in for a little bit of extra support Zip that piece in right there. 
fluff everything up a little bit. Okay, now we have that other pick. Um, so what I really need now is I need a little bit more leaves here and some more leaves here. So this is where we can take this pick and actually start cutting it apart. So we're gonna, but we're still gonna leave it in one nice big piece. See how nice, we got a pretty piece right here. Well, one leaf that fell off, but that's not bad. Another pumpkin. We have a pumpkin down here, so we could go ahead and put a pumpkin up here. And all, there's all their pretty leaves. See how easy this can be? Do you, is this not easy? I mean, this is easy. It's not hard at all. Um, so I'm going to, uh, this piece is not as heavy, but I'm still going to zip tie it just to be sure. I'm going to long piece. Because I feel like if we zip tie it in there, it's just going to help give it that support. But look what we're doing so far, guys. I put three pieces in here so far. That's all I have put. And it's already looking amazing. All right, so let's go ahead and zip tie this one in. And if you clean out your grapevine, it's not hard to get your uh, zip ties through. If you don't clean all that debris out of your grapevine, it makes it very hard to get stuff to go through it. But I did. I cleaned mine up. Always clean mine um, before I actually use it. I get all that debris out of there. All right, so now we can spread these leaves out. And I love the natural little sticks in them. Uh, you've got all these pretty leaves going everywhere. You've got your berries. You've got your cute little acorns. And you can shape and mold things any way you want them to go. All right. Kind of get it over here where I can look at it. Let's make maybe make that leaf go out that way so we have some fullness on the sides. We're getting some fullness in the middle. All right, 61. We keep going up and down, up and down. Nobody wants to win a chicken today? Okay, if there's something else I would rather win, I'll come up with something else. I know I got pretty signs over here. I always have some pretty signs. Let's try to get up to 75 today, guys. All right, now we already have two pumpkins, so I don't think I'm going to put a third pumpkin in this one. Um, I think what I want to go ahead and do is take a little bit of this um, cotton garland that uh, I have. It has a lot of the nice little sticks in it, and it has some nice greenery. You always want to add some greenery. Um, this piece right here looks like it would be a good one to put in, so I'm just going to cut this piece loose. Because we want to add a little bit of greenery to it, too. We don't want everything to be orange. Now, what you want to try to do is to keep what's coming below the bow going in this direction. And what's above the bow going in this direction. Does that make sense? Hi, Jean. How are you? Good to see you. Hi, Chris. Yes, uh, it is pricey. Unless you realize how many times you can break up that garland and use it for multiple projects. Then the price isn't so bad. Because if you think about how much you can pay for a pick, I mean, you can pay 9 or $10 for one pick. So why not go ahead and spend the money um, for a garland that you can use for multiple projects? At least that's the way I looked at it. Yeah, and then you use your 50% off coupon, and, and you've got you know, tons, tons out of it. All right, so I'm still keeping my mind on my C. And then I know I have this nice big bow that's going to come over here. And, of course, I'm going to cut some tails and we're going to curl them. But that kind of helps give me an idea of where I need to continue putting things. So I'm going to add... this piece which has lots of pretty greenery on it and I love how it's already got that natural curve and I think I'm going to pull it I think I'm going to go right up under the pumpkin let's see for sure where do I want to put it I 
because you want it to be, you don't want everything glued down so tight that it doesn't have any movement. So you can adjust everything on the garland. You've got lots of wires. Uh, let's see, maybe we need to come down further with it. Yeah, one leaf here that, and these are nice leaves on the pick too. I mean, everything that's on this pick has been very nice. I mean, the pumpkins are pretty velvet. Uh, I'm just not quite sure where I want this piece. Uh, we want to poke it up here. I don't want to go too far past my C. Oh, there we go. You see how that nestles in there? How that piece just nestled right in there like that? All right, so this time it's a pretty good size little pick, but I think I can glue this one in. Just take a little bit of this piece of the tape off because the tape will take all the glue and not your not your pick. So I do have my little glue pot over here with some nice glue in it. And we're just going to nestle that piece right in there. You just, it's a matter of just placing items until you get them to where they fall pretty. All right, so see what we got so far there? How that just kind of greened it up, and now that it's, um, it's okay, TK. I know it's summer, and I know everything's busy. Hi, Cheryl. How are you? Good to see you. Um, it's okay, you know. I understand we all have um, things to do. And uh, I'm trying my best to continue to do my lives in the summer. And uh, I, I, I'm going to pull these sticks off for the moment, okay? And uh, we'll save those. Because I like to add these in separately. So now I have another little piece of my cotton here. So let's see now where I think this will work. I know I've got to put something in here to bring some of the greenery down this way. And again, this has been wrapped with tons of tape, so you have to really be careful because all you'll do is get glue on your tape and it won't stay. Uh, so I think this piece I'm going to zip tie in here. So I can keep it as one big piece. So I'm just going to grab another zip tie and go straight down through the grapevine. And then come right back up. This is a, one of these projects that I tend to do standing up. Uh, I think it's just easier when you stand up to get an overall view of what you're doing. You've been ordering so much mess, you need help. I think I do, too. I know uh, I, I'm looking at my sales versus everything that I've been spending, and I'm like, okay, <laughs> you got to let the sales catch up with what you've been spending because I am in the red uh, spending too much money, but I'm getting all stocked up for Christmas because, you know, we'll use it all come Christmas. It'll all get used. That's a good one. Okay. So that's got this these both came off of the of the garlands okay so we have a nice big full down here we're getting fuller up towards the top um, we have some more pieces of some cotton I cut several and then you want to go ahead and add in let's see we've got some I've got some really pretty burgundy leaves and these came from Michaels so let's go ahead and cut a few of these and add some of these in here I hope y'all are doing great. I know it's uh, it's hot, it's summer, and you know it's it, it makes it miserable. But it won't be long. It'll be cold, and we'll all be complaining about the cold. <laughs> so, you know, I am just going to cut my stems, and I like to leave them pretty long so we can tuck them down in there. Oh, and I had this one little poor little leaf that fell. So let's see where I'm going to put this little leaf. Let's see if we just plop it in here somewhere. Let's move all that out. I know y'all can't see when I get this big clutter on my desk here. 
got this, yeah, so anybody got any questions so far? I'm losing viewers, so I don't guess we're going to get any giveaways today. Um, oh, here's another fun thing you can do. Um, if you see that you need a little bit more color, you know, the cute little, um, the little fall pumpkins and things that you see that are out, all these little gourds, you can poke a hole in the bottom of the gourd. And mine are rubber, so I know I can get it in there. And then, just take yourself a piece of a stem. Let's see if I can find a piece of a stem. I knew I saved one. Here it is. Just take a piece of stem and dip it in the glue. And then just push that right through where you just made that little opening in your pumpkin. And then now you can add this pumpkin in anywhere you want to. Just by, uh, it's already got a stem attached to it. You can bend the stem just like you can any other flower. You've got your piece of wire. So I'm thinking I might want this one to come right down here. And of course I can cut it and trim it off, which I am going to do. I'm going to trim it off a little bit. And then another great filler, of course, are leaves and your florals. All right, so we got a little pumpkin. You want to start kind of looking at how it is getting around the feathering so you can feather in some leaves. So we've got some fall leaves here. We can just start feathering these in. Uh, we probably want a little bit more towards the outside, too. So we can add some of this fall leaves in here. This will be really good fillers. So I'm just going to add this in here. And then they're wired. Uh, Michael's had these 70% off, I think. Just make sure you don't, you know, you don't want everything lying flat. Uh, you want it to have movement. You want your piece to have movement. Let's see, we've got some pretty flowers I want to add. I've got some uh, sunflowers. So let's see where we need some more color. Maybe put a sunflower up here towards the top. And it's just a matter now of just filling it in. You've got the bulk of your, uh, your work done by putting in your pieces of garland. So it's just a matter of going in here and adding a little bit more color. I've got some smaller ones too. And I'm, I would say the majority of, of what I have, it's probably from Michael's because they are the closest to me. So that's where I tend to go shop for most of my florals. Okay, so what else is going on? You won't hear you complaining about the cold. You welcome it. <laughs> you know, I lived in Gulf Shores forever and I never thought that it would get cold in Gulf Shores. But that wind, we lived on the, uh, on the lagoon side. And that wind would blow in there on the in the winter, and it was cold. Uh, I never thought it would be cold at the beach, but it was. So uh, I, I love it here in Auburn. We kind of have more of a, um, you know, a, more seasons. Let's put it that way. And it's not so bitterly cold. Now here's another thing that you can do if you wanted to add, say, another gourd. You can just use the stick that we just cut off of here and just plunk you in another little gourd. And I think that's what I'm going to do. So I'm just going to poke another hole in it. Take my leaf stem that I just made and then just slip that right through. And now when I go to put it in, not only do I have leaves, I have a gourd on it. So now it's just a matter of putting this in. Let's see. Let's look up top. I know my bow's going in here. We could probably use this one. I know I need some more going on down here. And maybe let that go more towards the center. 
And then I have a bunch of uh, pretty fall leaves that came from Dollar Tree. Um, these are the picks that they have. It's just lots of pretty leaves uh, and little pumpkins. All of these came from Dollar Tree. So this is good filler. So let me cut some of these down. I have a troll. Casey, can you delete the troll? I think you can block him, honey. You deleted and banned. Thank you, Casey. Uh, thank you, Tammy. I didn't know I had any trolls. That's probably my first troll. Oh, yeah, there it is. I see it. Abdul. Oh, goodness gracious. <laughs> you never can. You never know about those trolls. Wherever they, shop, they show up, they just show up. All right, so I think at this point I'm getting about ready to add my bow just so I can see where I want to add in some more florals uh, because I've kind of left this big opening for it. So let's go ahead and bring back in our bow. Let's see. Because I don't like to put my bow on too early because then I'm afraid that I will get glue on it. Honestly, guys, I really do. I hate to, I would, do not want to get glue on my bow. So I'm just going to tie it in right now. I'm not going to run it through the grapevine until I know for sure uh, that I have it in here the way that I want it. And I'm just going to start fluffing up this bow and I'm going to trim some of these tails. We're going to dovetail them and decide how much left. Of course, like I said, I left it long on purpose because I want to be able to curl. And this was a 16 inch uh, grapevine that I actually got from uh, Deco Exchange. Uh, I ordered several from them and they were looked really good. They came in in great shape. I was real pleased with that. All right, so we can take these tails and start curling them and trimming them. I wanted a couple going up because I like a few of the tails to go up towards the middle of the bow. Okay, another one over here. You know, I've got these really long and I wanted to curl these. I know our Dollar Tree has had a lot of little um, fall foliage, but not not much else, um, not much else at all. So it's been kind of disappointing every time I've gone in there. I don't know. Uh, the shells are bare. I don't know how y'all's Dollar Trees are looking, but my, my, my Dollar Trees just look pitiful. Just absolutely pitiful. But I did find some uh, nice little fall uh, fall leaves. All right, so we can curl. Let me turn it. Well, so far, I'm, I'm going to turn it back around, but I'll let y'all get a look here so far. I know that bow is just ginormous, but we're going to curl these tails. All right, so I'm just going to start curling. This one, I'm just going to fluff it up. Let it do its own little natural thing there. You know how you just lift them and pull them up to where they kind of almost look like another loop. And then this long one I'm going to curl. You can just curl it, twist it, and then pull it out and you have a nice little curl. Same with this one. You just kind of want to curl going in the direction you want it to come down. So see how I'm curling in this direction because I'm going to pull it down in this direction. Let me turn it where you guys can see. If you want your loop to go, if you want your tail to curl that way, you want to fold it coming in, in towards the center. And just start folding it and tapering it, tapering it as you come in. And then just grab that little piece of your tail, and then there you've got your little curl. So you see why now I, why I left those um, those tails long, because nothing's prettier. Now this side, I'm going to fold going in the opposite direction so that we come inward. And then just pull that little tail out. And then I have another long tail down here and down here. So we can 
fold this one in, same way, fold it in, coming towards that center, and then just pull that little tail out. And this is what makes these bows look so pretty. Well, I tell you, I need to clean up my, my table. My table is a mess. Some you may just want to lay hanging down long. Some we may need to cut. I think I may need to cut this one because I think what I want to do with this one is cut that one more time. I think I just want to fluff it. And then we'll fold this one and, and we'll curl it. Yeah, our Dollar Tree, it's, it's, I don't know what's happened. I mean, you know, no mesh, no ribbon whatsoever. Uh, I, I, I mean, there's just nothing there, absolutely nothing. Uh, you know, a, a few frames, but, I mean, the shelves are empty. There's no signs. Uh, there's just absolutely nothing. So if this is a, a sign of what we have to look forward to for Christmas from Dollar Tree, we're, we're not going to see very much this year. I don't know if they just haven't gotten uh, things in from overseas yet. You know, it's just going to be really, really hard to tell. All right, so you see what we got since we curled our bows? Let me lift up for a second. I did, I did oil my camera. Hopefully it won't squeak as bad today. All right, here's what we have so far. What y'all think? See by curling those tails, how pretty it fills it in? Oh, thank you, Elaine. Uh, again, all of it's one and a half inch ribbon. I just like working with the one and a half inch ribbon the best um, when it comes to a grapevine. Uh, I just think that uh, you can do so much with them. Now, you don't have to make this many tails. Uh, you don't have to curl your tails. So now since the bow's in there, we just really have a little bit of filling work to do. And um, it's going to be about ready. So let's see if I had, what else I had left over here. I know I wanted to add a few more little flowers. I've got some of these pretty flowers. Uh, let's see, I was going to add my little pumpkin gourd in here. It's got, this did come from Dollar Tree. So now you can see since your bow's there, you know where you have some gaps. And a grapevine does not have to be overpoweringly full of stuff. Um, you know, it, you don't have to. You can keep it flowy. Um, you might want to add some things over here behind your bow so that you have a little more motion coming out of the sides. Um, that is totally up to each designer. I think it's pretty to um, always have some leaves that you can put over here that will kind of draw the attention to the rest of the wreath, you know, just, oops, sorry guys, you can't see that. But again, the basis for what you've done were those first few pieces that you put in. I got that in there so good it doesn't want to come back out. You know, those larger pieces, that's all you needed to get it started. Now you've got a lot of coverage already. It's just a matter of going in here and filling in little gaps. Uh, filling in some gaps and feathering. I kind of call it feathering the edges. And my favorite thing to use to feather the edges, um, this pick comes from Hobby Lobby. It's just kind of a natural looking, um, I don't know what you call this. It's almost like a grass, but it's covered with little, um, I don't know, guys. It's kind of grainy. I don't really know how to explain it. This is really good to fill in and feather those sides. So I'm just going to cut off a few pieces of those. I love how they, they just kind of end. You know, you've got to have an ending point and a starting point. And I just love how these, towards the end of the uh, grapevine, just kind of like, you started off with large, you start coming down to small. This one lost its stick, so that's not going to help me. We could put a little flower right in here. 
because we need a little something in that little gap. And I know I have been on too long, guys. <laughs> it's been about an hour, and I promised y'all I wasn't going to keep you that long today. I'm so sorry. Y'all have been so sweet. Uh, don't forget to check out my Christmas kits. That's going to be coming up in two weeks. We're going to make our Christmas kit with Casey's son uh, on my live in two weeks. It's going to be gorgeous. I know it's going to be gorgeous because it's got her son. Uh, we do need a few little leaves over here, again, to finish out... Um, Feathering it out to the to the you know the complete point. Again, keeping your C in mind. You don't want to start covering the whole thing. And it's, it's just grapevines are so pretty. They're so fun to make, and you can be so creative um, with them. I want to add a couple little baby sunflowers. Also up there just don't be afraid to experiment until you glue it it's not permanent let's see i've already got some sunflowers there so maybe if we come down here and add a few little sunflowers it's getting full my grapevine is getting very full Y'all got any questions? You just made your second grapevine? Oh, yes, they do. You get better. Uh, the first one I made turned out really good. The second one I made, it, it ended up going in the trash. It was, it was garbage. It, it was awful. I just could not make it uh, look good. I had too much weight on it. Uh, it never did look right. So, yeah, it went in the trash. So, you know, don't be, don't be afraid. Uh, I, I, I shouldn't have glued so much in it. It got real heavy because I tried to put too much glue. I think, again, that's another reason why I like using zip ties uh, in here, too, so it doesn't get so heavy from all that glue um, that you put in it. And then, of course, you know, another thing is just step back from it and look um, to see if there's anything else that you want to add to it. I will probably, I may come back and add a few little things around the bow um, and then to, to, to hang it, I usually just use a, a zip tie, uh, not a zip tie, a pipe cleaner up towards the top. Just run it through your grapevine. But I also have found that, you know, the strings that you get on your signs that you cut off, these are awesome to use to hang your grapevines. So, um, you know, save this. I mean, I there's that's a perfect distance right there. I just use a a little threading needle. Uh, you definitely will want to get some of these if you're making grapevines. I just thread my little plastic needle and then you can run this little piece of string that was just a piece of trash trash string that you cut off your sign and then just run it up and tie yourself a nice little knot and look you've got a hanger. You've just made a hanger for your grapevine out of something that you would have thrown away and it looks very rustic so to me that's just a good way to use um use what you already have thanks debbie i appreciate that um yes my kits are good quality they're a little bit more expensive than some um people's i don't have that kind of buying power but just remember too that this kit contains a hand-painted sign by my daughter so it is unique. It is not something else that everybody else is going to have. So uh, I think it would be, it'll definitely be worth your money. Uh, you will either sell it, you can sell it, or, you know, um, keep it for your own door. All right, so I think, let me, have, let me pull it up here. And here's what we got. Try to hang it straight and if you see we didn't spend we took what a little over an hour we made a bow for it uh, we did everything we needed to do it's always hard for me to get it straight when I'm looking in my camera so there we go we've got us a grapevine a fall grapevine uh, and it didn't it didn't cost us that much uh, where did I get these needles you know I'm trying to remember now Tammy where I got them from 
I think I got them from, um, it may have been uh, online. It might have been Amazon. I know you can find everything on Amazon. So it could have very well been from there. Um, if not, check, you know, check Michael's, check Hobby Lobby. They probably, um, they probably have them. So, uh, but you know, here I just, I just made that little hanger. Uh, like I said, I'll put a little dab of glue on this to make sure that knot's uh, not going to fall out. And then just kind of pull that knot back to the inside of it. And you've got a great hanger out of something you normally would have threw away. So, uh, I, I love the... The, also the rustic look of it it blends in with your grapevine so that's what I'll do I'll end up uh, dabbing some glue on that so um, okay I'm, I'm done guys that's all I wanted to show you today thank you I appreciate y'all you're welcome I love I love sharing um, I love trying to teach you uh, any, anything I have learned that uh, I can help you with and today I did open up if you're not a member of my private group Val's Visions and Designs. I have renamed it to Val's Crafty Club, no, Val's Crafty Pals. And you will be able to share your creations in there, your lives, excuse me, your lives in there. So uh, just make sure you look, look for Val's Crafty Pals. Uh, I want to be able to see what you guys make too. So thank you again, everybody. I really appreciate your, um, your being here. Thank you for your support. Um, Tammy, I will look and send you a link um, for these because these are a lifesaver um, to be able to get in through these grapevines. And if you guys make a grapevine, I want you to make sure you share it on Val's Crafty Pals because I like to see what you're making too. So uh, thank y'all. Y'all, again, I appreciate y'all. Um, and uh, next Sunday, I'm not sure what we'll do next Sunday. I'm thinking we might do either a tobacco wreath or a unique in the creek christmas tree so uh, i'll have to think about it this week to see what i want to show you so i'll also be live on my youtube channel on wednesday morning at 9:45 a.m um i'm going to be going live on my youtube channels more and more uh, i know i have in the works another um fall swag and uh, then we'll probably start wrapping up fall and start doing lots and lots of Christmas. So, <laughs> All right. Well, y'all have a great rest of your Sunday afternoon. Thank you so much for your support. Mwah! Love you guys. Thanks again for sharing. I appreciate y'all.